Hi, I'm Darren Lithgow. I'm the author of TNG, The Next Generation of Genealogy Site Building. And today we're going to be installing the full version of TNG 11. Uh, you should have received an email with the download information. Uh, but if you haven't downloaded already, then go there now. Go to your email and click on that link. Uh, enter the login information. Remember that it's all case sensitive. So enter everything exactly as it appears there should come to a page like this. This is the version 11 downloads page. Uh, near the top, you'll see several different versions. Um, the one you want will be the top one, version 11. So you just click there to start the download. I should mention, by the way, right now that I'm using a Mac. Um, this uh, tutorial should be good for uh, uh, anyone on Windows or any other operating system, so that shouldn't matter. Uh, I'm also using Google Chrome as my browser, but this should work in any browser. Okay, so I've downloaded the file, and uh, I've in fact uh, already unzipped it. All you have to do is find the file on your hard drive, double click on it, it should open into a new folder uh, with several hundred files and subfolders. I want you to find the one, the file, called readme.html. See, I've already found it and highlighted it double click on that and it should open a new tab in your browser and uh, you've got a couple different options there express installation and regular installation the difference is that uh, regular is more verbose a lot more explanation of each step express is right to the point and uh, should do, get you there a lot quicker I recommend that so unless you need help uh, with a particular step I'd say uh, start with the Express. So I'm going to go there. And uh, the very first step at the top, it says upload or copy all the files and folders to the location on your website where you plan to run TNG. This can be the root folder or any subfolder. Okay, so I'm assuming that you have a website and a domain name and a hosting provider, so you're all set there. Um, at this point, to get the files to your website, you should use an FTP program. That stands for File Transfer Protocol. There are quite a few FTP programs available on the internet for download. Uh, some are going to cost money, some are not. So a good one I recommend that is also free is called FileZilla. I'm going to close this for a second. Uh, when you uh, download and install FileZilla on your computer, and then open it you should see something like this now your files on your computer are going to be here on the left now on the right is where your website files are going to be see right now we're not connected so we need to fix that and uh, up in the upper left you should find an icon or maybe in, under the menu there'll be an option uh, for the site manager and uh, here's where you can enter the information to connect to your website you see I've already done that so I'm going to click on that. Uh, that goes down there is my website. Over on the right is where you enter the information you'll need to connect to your website. And your hosting provider can give you this information. You'll need the host, which is in most cases just your domain name, and the uh, username, and a password. Uh, for most people, the protocol is just going to be the regular FTP, and the port number will be left blank plain encryption and the login type will be normal. When you come in here in FileZilla you might see anonymous selected first so choose normal. Once you've got all that information in there just click connect and it will do its stuff and you will be connected to your website. Now over here on the right are all the files and folders from your website. And I want you to look for one called public HTML. It's where all the uh, files and folders will be that are visible on the internet. So anything that you upload needs to go in there in order to be seen online. So let's double click on that and go inside. And here I've got all my uh, files and folders that are visible online. And I'm going to start by creating a new folder to put TNG in. However, if you want your uh, domain name to point directly at your TNG files, and then you should drop your TNG files right here inside the public HTML folder. Okay, so I'm going to create a new directory. I just right clicked on that window, choose create directory. I'm going to call it version 
11. You can call it whatever you want. You can call it TNG or genealogy. Remember, if you uh, entered an uppercase letter here, then that will be required when you go to your website in your browser. So I would recommend that you keep it all lowercase. Okay, choose OK. And there's my new folder. So I'm going to double click to go in it. See, and now when I want to visit this installation later, I will type lithgos.net slash version 11 in my browser. Okay, over on the left, I'm going to find where I left the TNG files. Here they're in the production 111 folder. And I'm going to select everything. And you can select one thing by clicking on it or you know, shift or use the command or control key to select multiple things. But to select everything, hold down your command or control key and press the letter A. That will select everything. Then all you have to do is drag and drop to the other side like this. Click, hold down, drag over, and let go. And within a few seconds, you see things start to move. This should take about five minutes to, well, depending on your web connection, how fast your internet speed is. Um, but uh, it shouldn't take that long. So give it a few minutes. And I'm going to cheat a little bit and uh, pause this recording and come back when it's done. OK, and just like that, we're done. So let's go back to our installation instructions. You see we've uploaded all the files. Now it says if you're viewing this guide locally, close it now and browse to it on your site. Use a browser, not an FTP program. Sometimes people are tempted to you know, click on the file right here in the FTP program. What I mean is uh, in your, here in your browser you need to type the web address. You see right now with the word file in the front that indicates that I just opened this file on my computer. It's not actually pointed at the website. So I need to uh, type over this. Like so. And if you left the readme.html off the end, it would still find it the first time. OK, let's uh, increase the size again a little bit. And go back into the express installation. All right, so now you can tell from the uh, browser address bar that we are viewing the file from the website. OK, so moving on to step three, setting permissions. There are some files and folders in TNG that need to be writable. You need to give uh, scripts the permission to change things. So you need to click this button to set those permissions. So I'm just going to click there. And easy enough, permissions have all been set. And sometimes uh, you might find the host will not allow this. If that's the case, you'll see a red message indicating that you might have to do that yourself through the FTP program. You know, if you need to do that, you can just come to your FTP program, find a file, right click on it, certainly, and choose uh, File Permissions. Here's where you would either click those permissions or enter the numeric value right there. Okay, so easy enough. All right, we, uh, ours worked, so we're moving on to step four, rename the folders. Okay, for security reasons, we recommend that you rename some of these folders because they're the same on every TNG site. Wouldn't want uh, the bad guys to come find your uh, backups folder, your GEDCOM folder, and download all your information um, against your will. So uh, for that reason, I recommend you just give your backups folder and your GEDCOM folder a different name. I'm just going to type something on the end like XYZ. Uh, until I've done this before. Okay, so once I've entered the new names, then I click Rename the Folder. Easy enough. Okay, now if you have to do this again later and you come back through the Set Permissions step and try that, you might see something like the Backups and the GEDCOM folder cannot, uh, the permissions can't be set there. Well, that's because you renamed them when you tried it the first time. So don't worry about that if you see that message. All right, moving on to Step 5. Uh, choose your language. If your language is English and you don't mind using the UTF-8 character set, then you can either click Save or just skip this step. However, if uh, English is not your first language, you might click here to select one of the other options. You notice for each language there are two options, one for UTF-8 and one for ISO 8859-1, which is the same as ANSI. 
So depending on your GEDCOM file and what data set you're using, uh, you will need to choose between these two character sets. So choose the one most appropriate for your data. If you're using a language like, um, say, Swedish, uh, that has a lot of uh, diacritics or other um, special characters, you might want to use UTF-8 rather than ANSI. But again, it all depends on the data that you're using. Okay, I'm just gonna, going with English, so I'm just going to save that. The next step might be the trickiest for most people, and that is establishing the database connection. As it says there, if you don't know this information, ask your web host. They may want you to create the database. Um, there are also two new fields here. If you've installed TNG before, they're called database port and socket. Most people won't need those, but I've, I've included them now just in case you do. All right, so at this point, you will probably need to go to your site control panel or C panel. I've already got that open for me. It will look pretty much like this for most people. Maybe the design will be a little bit different, but it'll look like this. Scroll down until you find the database section. Here we go. And now I'm gonna choose the MySQL, MySQL databases option. And right away, you'll notice the option near the top to create a new database. They've already given you a prefix, so no matter what you enter in the box, it's going to have that prefix at the front of it. So let's just call it TNG11. Create the database. All right, we've added that database. Let's go back and do something else. The next thing we need to do, I'm going to scroll down past the section of all my databases to the user section. I need to create a database user. And again, there's a prefix. To keep it simple, I'm just going to type TNG11 for the again for the username. For the password, let's do something simple like ABC123. All right, yes, this is extremely weak. Maybe I'll try XYZ on the end. So ABC123 XYZ. I'm telling you because it doesn't matter. This is all going to be deleted by the time you see this video. All right, so I'm going to create the user. Done. Let's go back. And the last piece that you need to worry about here beyond the user section is that we need to add the user to the database. This is very important. If you forget this, then things still won't work. So I'm going to choose the user I just added and choose the database I just added and click the Add button. And it'll give you a list of privileges. You want to select all the privileges. And usually there's a button on the top to let you select all at once. And click the button at the bottom to make those changes. Excellent. So our database is set up. We can go back to our installation instructions. You'll notice the top uh, entry is already filled in as localhost. For most people, that's what it'll be. If it's not localhost, in a few ca rare cases it's not, then usually somewhere on your C panel, maybe at the paragraph at the top, it will tell you what the host name should be. If you've gone back here and entered everything just as exactly as you just uh, created it and still doesn't work, it could be that the host name is wrong. So you might need to check with your hosting provider. All right, so I'm going to enter the database name and the username. Let's see, I've practiced this a few times already. And my password, ABC123, XYZ. I'm going to leave the port and the socket blank. I don't need that. Save and verify. All right, so if you're correct, if you entered everything correctly, you will see that green message again. And just go right on to the next step, which is to create the tables. Okay, so uh, this step is going to uh, populate the database you just created with several empty tables that TNG will use to store your data in. All you have to do is click the Save and Create button. Now there's a new field right above it here. You'll notice Database Collation. So again, if you're using a language with uh, many special characters, uh, you might uh, need to enter a different collation. I've taken the liberty of uh, defaulting this to UTF-8 General CI. The CI stands for Case Insensitive. All right, so I'm just clicking the button. After a second, you can see the tables have been created, so we're good to move on. The last three steps 
you could do later if you wanted to. Uh, but I, I put it here so you can take care of it now. Because uh, it's very important that you have a TNG user. So that's step number eight, create a user. So let's uh, just create one. I'll just call it my own name to start. And it doesn't really matter. You can change this again later if you want to. But you should definitely uh, enter your email address at the end. This is because if you forget your username, you can have TNG email it to you. If you forget your password, you can have the program email you a new password. So it's very important that you enter your email there. If you don't, then you, you won't be able to receive that email. Create the user. All right, so now when I go to my administration page later, I'm going to be required to enter that username and password. Step nine is to create a tree. A tree is just a container for your genealogy, for your GEDCOM file. You can have multiple trees on your site if you want to, but really if everybody in your database is related or can be related, then you really only need one tree. Uh, you can pick anything you want for the tree ID, but it should be something short, uh, no spaces. This will only be visible in the address bar of your browser. You can pick, you can keep it at tree one if you'd like. Now the tree name, uh, you can put something longer. You could uh, change this later if you want to. It doesn't really matter. Just create the tree. Okay, and finally, select a template. This is the design, uh, the theme, if you will, that goes on top of your site. It's optional. If you want to see what the various designs look like, click here. It should open a new tab, show you all the various templates, give you a preview of some of them. So feel free to look around there, then go back to your installation instructions, choose the corresponding number, let's say 14, and select the template. And you're pretty much done at this point. It's all up and running. Uh, there are some other helpful categories that you might browse into down here to look at, settings that you can change, also your data. This will instruct you on how to import your GEDCOM file or tell you a little bit about entering the data by hand. There's also a page about customizing your, uh, your website. Uh, it goes a little bit more into the templates and what else you can do. Okay, but for now, you can click here to go to your home page or click here to go to your administration menu. I'll just click there and you'll see that looks like this. If you're going to import your GEDCOM file, you come here and browse to it right there. I'll go into this more in a different video. And you can see there, there's already an important task for you at the top. Okay, back, I'm gonna go back there. Let's go back to my installation instructions. Show you that here's a link to my home page. And don't be frightened by this uh, fake Latin that's here in many of the templates. That's just a filler. You can go to the template settings and enter your own information. Uh, let's go back and show you quickly about that back on the instructions back to the admin menu over here in setup template settings here's where you change the title and all that fake latin text you can even add your own pictures but i'll go into this more in a different video on customizing but for now you're done thanks for watching